bachelor girl, too. And they say this book answers everything. Is this the book that shows you how to put men in their place? Uh, yes, ma'am. Look at that, Harrison. Every female from 6 to 60 will make this a bestseller. And you're worrying about a measly printing bill. Oh, uh, take a straight wire. Miss June Cameron, Lakewood Lodge, Lakewood Mass. Dear June, I hate to cut short your vacation, but uh, imperative that you return at once. Have great idea for the sequel. Please wire time of arrival. Uh, good morning. Somebody take my bags, please. I'm in an awful hurry. Would you mind? Well, I guess I'll have to take them. Where's your car? I I'm not driving, you know. Oh, but you should have. How are you going to get to the depot? Well, the same way I got here. You've still got that station wagon, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes. Well? But since up in town getting supplies, you know, we can't afford to stock in the way the big places do. Oh, no, naturally not. Nevertheless, I've still got to get to the station. And don't tell me you can't afford a station around here, because I've got to get to New York. Sure. If you left five minutes ago, you could have made it. If you're going to tell me there's not another train out of here, I'll... Train in the morning. We used to have two trains a day. Since they stopped making shoes up north. I don't care what they've stopped making up north. I've got to get to New York, and that's all there is to it. I beg your pardon, but would you mind lowering your voice? I'm phoning. I, I beg your pardon. Thank you. What was that, Dad? Of all the inefficient, ill-organized places I've ever please, seen in my... Please, please, this is a long-distance call. Well, then why don't you phone from a booth? This is hardly the place. I would phone from a booth if there were a booth. This happens to be the only phone in the place that's costing me money. All so right, you all please? right, I'm sorry. Yes, I... What did you say, Dad? I said a radiogram just arrived from that friend of yours, Miss Marilyn Thomas. Her boat gets in at noon tomorrow, and she sends you her love. You know, if you can't take people to the station, then why don't you close your hotel Will on you the track? Will you please be quiet? If you were a gentleman, you'd wait until I got through. The treatment finished. I, I no bellboys, uh, no service, no hot water, no cold home. water, no transportation. Will you please stop no this childish conversation? I can't hear a word. You have no right to I, monopolize the entire yes, lobby. Yes, I can do that. Oh! Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. Are you hurt? What are you trying to do? Just trying to get to New York, that's all. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you very much. I, um, I'm awfully sorry I shouted at you like that. Oh, I didn't mind, but really, you shouldn't get so excited. It's bad for your nerve centers. Which way are you going? New York. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you very much. Hey, but look much. here, I... I now, don't I, you bother at all. I'll take care of my bag. Oh, hey, would you put these in the car, please? Oh, so you got a ride after all. Yes, this kind gentleman's going to give me one. What you got in here, anyway? Hotel clerks. Oh, get off. <laughs> it's the best road to Lakewood. Highway 44. If it was open, of course, there's Route 32. But the mud's awful annoying. After you, that'll be a pleasure, my good man. Good day. Uh, have you got a cigarette? No. Well, oh, I think I've got some in my coat right here. Trunk murderer? No! You know, he's a spitting image of my Uncle Chester. Oh, you're fond of him, aren't you? Cost $250. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you mind turning that box up? No, not at all. There you are. Uh, you two always travel together? I use him in my work. I don't mean to pry into your private life or anything like that, but uh, uh, just what is Chester to you? Well, I teach neuropsychiatry, and I'm doing some research in migraine headaches. Oh. The head opens up. <laughs> just what is your theory on migraines, in case I get a headache? Blood vessels in the head dilate excessively due to excitement and overwork, causing a pressure on the nerve centers. Oh. Yes, we travel at much too fast a pace, especially women. They are not equipped to uh, take an equal place in a man's world. <laughs> Just what makes you think it's a man's world? Well, it's an accepted fact that the male is a superior animal. Now, in spite of what you and little Chester here may think, the modern woman can match you men fiber for fiber and have a rib left over. I think you read that somewhere. I did. 
in the most wonderful book called Spinster's Aunt Spinach. Oh, yes, yes. That chambermaid at the hotel had a copy. Oh, did she? Now, the one with no forehead. Well, you shouldn't read trash like that. I didn't read it. Well, it's just as well. I wrote it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's quite all right. I didn't expect you or any other man to enjoy it. You know, marriage is no longer the answer to a maiden's prayer. Oh, slaving over a hot stove all day is all right for some of the more backward members of our sex, but there's a new kind of woman coming into the fore. The kind that refuses to subordinate her personality to, to that of the egotistical, domineering male. Hmm. Seems to me the Amazons tried it. I forgot to send that wire. Would you please stop at the telegraph office? Miss, I'd like to send this wire, please. Hey, kid! You want to make a quarter? Sure. Well, you take this and put it on the back of that car. Which one? Oh, that one down there. Best regards, June Cameron. It'll be 62 cents and three cents tax, please. Very well. June Cameron? June Cameron? <laughs> yes. Oh, just a minute. Oh, I've read it three times. I think it's simply wonderful. Well, I'm awfully glad you liked it. Would you autograph it for me, please? Yes, we'd like it. Oh. Oh, Miss Cameron, you've no idea what this book has done for me. It's changed me into a career woman. Well, I'm very good. I used to feel awful when men didn't insult me, but now I don't care anymore. That's very nice. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Cameron. Bye. 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 Oh. Oh. A traitor. And of course you men resent the intelligent woman. You're used to the clinging vine who inflates your ego 24 good hours evening, a day. Oh, good evening, George. Will you take my bags, please? By telling you what a wonderful man you are. Oh, no. They don't marry you for love. They marry you for security. <laughs> the independent but frustrated female. I wish you'd drop into my class sometime. I'd like my students to see you. I forgot the career woman is never to blame. I'd rather not discuss it anymore if you don't mind. And will you please leave? You know, you're really a specimen for a clinic. I am. <laughs> of all the ungrateful females. You force your way into my car, I drive you 400 miles, buy the gas and oil, buy you a hamburger, you ruin a $250 head. Well, you're not going to need that part. Chester won't get a headache in his nose. <laughs> That's the attitude you're going to take, you can pay for it. Trip costs me exactly $9.80. You can pay half, which is $4.90. Why don't you run along and correct some papers or something? 
I'm very busy. Ordinarily, I'm a very calm and peaceful individual. That's because I've got thin earlobes and rather thick eyebrows. But you see these? They're thumbs, short thumbs, which means I'm stubborn. And I'm not going to get out of here like at $4.90. Fortunately, my thumbs show no evidence of uh, pygmy ancestors. However, I too can have my obstinate moments. And this is one of them. Well, we might just as well make ourselves comfortable. We might just as well. Do you know that my first generous impulse was to give you a miserable $4.90? But since you've adopted this typical high-handed Prussian attitude of the mail, you, you can just sit on those sawed-off digits until certain place freezes over. Call it 75 cents. Makes four dollars and fifteen cents you owe. Silver. I'm sorry, I'd like to give you more, but I'm afraid the best I can do is a uh, dollar. Which leaves three dollars and fifteen cents. Well, ten years old. That's more than I can say for you. This might take care of the balance. Let's be generous. Call it 40 cents a drink. <coughs> I'm wrong. 20 cents. Mr. Pierce, this is the Morning Express. We just received word that June Cameron got herself married. How about the details? Married? <laughs> Why, my dear fellow, I'm afraid after midnight I lose my sense of humor. <laughs> if June Cameron married anybody, I'd be the first to know about it because it would probably be me. I can't blame you for trying to keep it quiet. I know that wedding bells means curtains for that bestseller of hers. I extend my condolences. But the other papers will have it in a couple of hours, and I mean to beat them to it. But this is ridiculous, old man. Well, I tell you, only a short while ago I received a wire from her, and she never mentioned a word about it. Hold on a moment. Yeah, here it is. I've got it in my hand right now. Mabel, yeah? get June Cameron's address and send Maxon the photographer over right away. Leaving a balance of um, 60 cents. Would you like to take the rest out in aspirin? Don't interrupt. Marilyn never interrupts. Wonderful girl, Marilyn. Not like you at all. I'm gonna marry Marilyn as soon as I become a professor, and what's more, she's gonna marry me. Name's Marilyn. And I wouldn't trade her little finger for your... Well, I just wouldn't, that's all. Marry her tomorrow. This very day. If I was a professor. But I'm not. I'm just a measly hundred dollar a month in instructor. And that's too much to ask anybody to marry you on. It's too much to ask. You're quite right, Hamlet. This is too much to ask. Now that the bill is paid, will you leave? Very well. If that's the way you feel about it, very well. I have never overstayed when my company wasn't welcome. Now, that's a very good boy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, wait a minute. Oh. 
Hey! Oh, no, you don't. Get off of that bed. Get up and get out of here or I'll be thrown up. This is the car. M.D., she married a doctor. M.D. 1527. What a story. Well, boys, I'm glad I got here. I'm Miss Cameron's publisher. Why, the whole thing's laughable. Why don't you save that to the disappointed females? But really, listen, the whole thing's silly. Well, if, if June Cameron's married, then I'm the king of Turkestan. <laughs> Make way for his majesty. Congratulations. Where'd you meet him? Hold it, please. Don't say a word. Just deny it. Deny what, John? Now one on the couch. Now, just a minute. What's this all about? What made you exchange the torch for the carpet sweep? Cross your legs, please. Uh, yes, sir. Say, wouldn't you rather I had on my bathing suit? Huh? What made you desert the ship and jump into the sea of matrimony? Matrimony? Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me what this is all about. Just let me guess. I know. A college initiation, huh? Now, look, lady. We're all losing a lot of sleep. When, where, how, why, and who did you marry? Hey, that's a very funny gag. What is it? You see? <laughs> How could she be married? She doesn't know a thing about it. Stop that! Ooh. Oh, Rice. What's your husband's name? I haven't any husband. Suppose that guy in there runs a Chinese restaurant. Johnny. Throw these vultures out of here. Oh, it's no use, June. You might as well give them a statement. I will give them exactly ten seconds to get out of here. All right, lady. All right. I'll just have to use my imagination. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, that man in there really isn't my husband. He's, he's a, a, a prowler. Lady, I don't care what your husband does for a living. <laughs> Well, Johnny, do something. They're going to print that I'm married. You don't have to pretend with me. Why didn't you confide in me? Oh, stop it, will you? There's nothing to confide. Say, so where did everybody get the idea that I was married? What about the big surprise in The Wire from Greenwich? Oh, oh, that was about, uh, about my sequel. And the surprise was that I had the first three chapters all finished. Mm hmm And the just married sign. And the partially dressed man in your bedroom dripping with rice. <sighs> Johnny, but it's all so simply explained. Yeah, when you come to the man in the bedroom, it better be good. Listen, old man, Miss Cameron's just explained everything to me. Of course, I don't blame your reporters for jumping to conclusions. On the surface, it all spelt matrimony, but, um, <laughs> well, take a colleague's word for it and forget the whole thing. Oh, they're not married. Then we'll have to print that the gentleman in her bedroom was not her husband. Yeah, they're married. Give me that phone. Well, it was either that or else headlines screaming of strange men are running in and out of your bedroom. It's all the fault of that migraine headache in there. Wake up. Wake up and get out of here. Oh, you're responsible for all this, you and your short thumbs and your $4.90. Johnny, maybe if he went down to the editor's office well, and explained to him... Well, that's locking the well-known barn. The papers will be out in 15 minutes. Well, we've got to do something. This will ruin my career. Yeah, and you can add my business to that. Spinster's Aunt Spinach is going to pay for my printing bill. Now all we can sell the copies for are doorstops. You don't seem to realize the enormity of the disaster. Oh, Johnny. Once my creditors get through, I'll have to sublet my water cooler. Or will I? Hmm? It might be filled with champagne. What do you mean? How many spinsters are there in America? There are exactly 8,423,000 who are not going to buy my book. And how many married women are there? Exactly over 25 million. There's you are going to write that second book, a book about marriage. We'll call it, we'll call it, um, Marriage Ain't Measles. Uh, sorry. Uh, are you sure you're feeling all right? Perfectly. This is it. This is our horn of plenty. What you did for the spinster, you can do for the housewife. It's a bigger subject, a bigger market. Do you get the angle? You're converted. America's number one bachelor girl tastes the fruits of marriage and loves it. 
Well, even if I did want to write the book, and I don't, mind you. Oh, Johnny, I don't know anything about marriage. Oh, what's that got to do with it? Dante didn't have to go to hell to write his inferno. Wait a minute. You mean you want me to stay married to this... this thing? Only till you finish the book, then Reno, and you can fake a divorce. Uh, you must be pretty deeply attached to me to cook up such an idyllic arrangement with this medical pot roast here. No thanks, Johnny, not for me. Oh, listen, June, I, I didn't mean it that way. Now, my dear, don't think for one fleeting second that my affections for you have altered because they haven't. You know how I feel about you. Well, you have a strange way of showing it. Throwing me into the clutches of Dr. Jekyll in there. It'll only be a business arrangement. When you come back from Reno, I shall be waiting. I know. With an idea for a book called Divorce is a Dynamite. No. no, Johnny, I wouldn't spend one more minute with that man if the sequel went into more editions than the telephone book. Well, it was fun while it lasted. It's nobody's fault. And don't you worry about me. I've been stuck with larger printing bills than $7,000. Oh, you've worked so hard to get where you are. I hate to no, be no, the no, one... No, 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 none of that. In this world, you've got to think of number one, yourself. If you want to get anywhere, you've got to be selfish. I'm worried about you, Sweet. Johnny. I... Well, I must be getting along. Knowing that printer, I'll need a head start. Good night, my dear. Good night. Johnny. Johnny, do you actually think if I wrote a book about marriage, it would sell? I knew you'd come through. Of course it would sell. Women would love someone to tell them why they got married. Would they? Sure. Glorify the American home. Sing hosannas for the fireside and security. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Show them how to keep romance alive and, uh, and teach every wife how to be a sweetheart as well. Yeah. Uh, what about the other half of this deception? Junior will never go for it. No, oh, I'll take care of him. We'll, uh, we'll cut him in on the profits. Uh, you don't know Junior. He's got short thumbs. <laughs> Well, there's no use in talking to him now. We'll let him sleep it off, and I'll be back first thing in the morning. Morning? Well, we can't take him out now. There might be reporters outside. They think it was a gin marriage. Well, everything's settled. See you in the morning, sweetheart. Wait a minute. Where am I supposed to sleep? As if I didn't know. How does America's favorite authoress feel this morning? I feel just like I slept in a cement mixer all night, thank you. Well, my plan looks even better in daylight. It does, huh? Harrison, that's the printer, is willing to play ball. Oh, that's very good. However, I think you're going to have a hard time getting Junior in there to join the team. And how does he feel this morning? I wouldn't know. Come along and we'll wake up the Sleeping Beauty together. Well, there he is, the human question mark. And he's all yours. Wake up, old man. Wake up. Oh. I bet you feel badly, don't you? Oh, awful. Terrible. What are you doing in my room? In your room? That's right, this isn't my room. Where am I? You're a very lucky man. You've made money while you've been asleep. That's it. Break it to him gently. Timothy Sterling, welcome. Hey, this is me. That's right. But I couldn't be married to you. What, what, what did Marilyn say? Th this is a frame up. Where are my pants? Don't look at me. I'm not wearing them. Don't get out of here. Now, just a minute, short thumbs. If you don't mind, I like to change my clothes at the beginning of each well, day. Well, I don't care what you do at the beginning of each day. I want my pants. Now, I where don't are know they? where you're Now, listen, June, I'll explain the whole thing to him. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, listen, old man, that's right. You I listen to me. What am I doing here? I should be at the university. I can explain the whole thing. Who are you? Now, let me explain. The whole thing's as plain as the nose on your face. Leave my face out of this. Where are my pants? And then you see, doctor, they put two and two together and said you were married. Now, make it worth your while to stay that way. No, where are my pants? I...
You know, he's stubborn. That's an understatement. Where are my pants? Maybe I'd better give him 10% of the gross. While you're at it, throw in his pants. Now, listen, Doctor. If you'll just do this tiny, simple little thing for me, I'll give you 10% of the gross. No! It's all a cheap publicity stunt for the trash that she writes. I'm going straight down to the papers and deny the whole thing. Thanks. Doctor and Mrs. Sterling, a wedding greeting from Professor and Mrs. Klaushauser. One, two, three. Here's success to the bride. Where are my pants? Isn't it pretty? Down! Down. Adoring and bursting with pride. Now but that Dr. Sterling, I assure you, you're making a great mistake. Whenever I get my coat out of your head so fast, we can hit. You can't have a hot scotch, do you think? this world are far from your heart. Though troubles come, you'll never be apart. So here's a toast to you, oh, right so fair and true. For you and Dr. Sterling. May the loving oh, wife will you just take them into the bedroom? mother yes. too. And here's to the groom. Congratulations, Dr. Sterling. Oh, you too. Get out of my way. And we're off the family hearts when things they go wrong. And here's to the pair. Where's my head? And there is heavenly union instead. Cares of this world my head. are far from your heart. Though troubles come, you'll ne'er be apart. And here's to the groom, so stalwart and strong. Defender of the family hearts oh, and things that go wrong. wrong. Thomas. Oh, congratulations, Doctor. Get the Morning Express and the Herald. Get all the papers. I want to talk to each one of them. Tim. Oh, hello, Dad. Look, I want to explain. Oh, it was son, all... you don't know how happy you've made me. For a time, you know, I was afraid it was going to be Marilyn. You were? Look, look at that. Your mother's chin all over again. Dad, please listen a to me. A fine, well-shaped head. But, Dad, you've Cameron, got to listen to me. good scotch blood. Dad, oh. will you please listen to me and sit down? I've got to explain something, and it's going to be a shock. I've got a little shock for you, my boy. Yes, but I know, but... a pleasant one. Now, sit down, Tim. Sit down. I just spoke to Dean Law. Congratulations, Professor Sterling. Yes, but that's beside the... Professor, but but I thought Hampshire was going to get the post. Well, it was very close until this morning, but you know how the dean feels about marriage. And as you're a married man and Hampshire isn't... Oh, but it couldn't be just because I'm married. Oh, the dean's always had a theory that the chair of neuropsychiatry should be held by a married man. A man who lives a natural, well-balanced life will have a much sounder approach to the study of the unbalanced. Yeah, Professor Sterling, too bad. And what's the matter with you, son? Don't you want the professorship? Oh, yes, Dad, more than anything else in the world, but... But, Father, I've got to tell you the truth. Tim! Congratulations! <laughs> we are mighty happy for you, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, Father, there's something I've got to tell you. <clears throat> oh, Dean Lawton. Congratulations, Professor Sterling. Thank you. When can we see the bride? Oh, any time. Okay. We'll all drop up tonight. For a moment, I thought Junior was back. Well, what do you want now? You've ruined her career and you've ruined my business. But I didn't tell the papers. Oh. Oh, you're going on the radio. No, no, I thought it over and I realized what it meant to you both. I knew you'd come through. Why, I was only just saying to Miss Cameron just now, I know a gentleman when I see one. Oh, that's <laughs> very nice of you, Doctor. And what suddenly made you change your mind? Now, don't get the idea that I like this. I'm merely doing it because I'm a gentleman and I hate to see you ruin your career. I, I hope you realize all the inconveniences you'll be letting yourself in for. The doctor knows what he's doing. Everything's all right. You've nothing to worry about. Why, the book will be finished. She'll be on her way to Reno to fake a divorce even before you know it. Oh, come on. Oh, that's one thing I want to get straight. Now, when you go to Reno, you must take all the blame. You must make the separation look as if it's entirely your fault. Why? Well, oh, my... My position at the university. Oh, of course, of course it'll look like her fault. <laughs> uh, why, we're going to paint her so black that no self-respecting man will even look at her. I can see chivalry is not dead. 
course, he's not doing so well, but it's not dead. Oh, and there's one thing more. Uh, now that we are married, I... Uh, where are we? What do we... You know... Uh... Oh, 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 yes, I, I've taken a year's lease on this place. You mean we live under the same roof? Your own brother would be safe with me. But, uh... Oh! The boat! Marilyn, she's coming on the boat at noon! How am I going to explain this to her? Oh, it's perfectly simple. Well, then explain it to me. But if I don't tell her the truth, I'll lose her forever. Oh, but you can't do that. The secret must be between us three. Certainly. You know what women are. She might get plastered one night and go and blab it all over the town. If it once leaks out that you two aren't married, well, then we can just kiss goodbye to her career. But I've got to tell Marilyn something. Well, tell her for the next three months uh, that she must trust you, believe in you, use blind faith. Supposing she's nearsighted. And, Doctor, if she won't see you through this, well, then she's not the woman you thought she was, and we've saved you from making a terrific mistake. Yes, but if she sees this before I can talk to her, I won't even get the chance to explain. That's right. She shouldn't see this. <laughs> you know how to take care of women. Yes, but why not how to take care of Marilyn? Hey, uh... She likes flowers. Maybe if I wrote fast enough, we could get the books out to the dealer before the boat docks. <laughs> Wait a minute. Perhaps I've lost touch with things, but aren't you supposed to look like a man with a $7,000 printing bill? <laughs> I'm very unhappy. <laughs> I'm a very miserable man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he does not come. I hope he's thinking out somebody's that noise. Uh, then I can take you home. Oh, he'll be here. I know Tim. You can always depend on Tim. Uh, Miss Thomas? Yes. Oh, thank you. Merci. And thank you so very much for making my trip so pleasant. Oh, look, flowers. That's another reason I just love my Tim. He's very studious looking. He's brilliant. And what's more important, he's reliable. Johnny. Hello, darling. Any signs of our doctor friend? Nope. And you know, I have a sneaking hunch that our little headache is going to disappoint us. Oh, I wouldn't worry about him. Oh, beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, my next door neighbor, Dr. Sterling. Congratulations. Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> you won't regret it. I never did. I'll be married 16 years next Thursday. Uh, Friday. Uh -huh. That's it. Oh, it's so nice to have married people next door. My wife's away just now, but when she gets back, we'll arrange to set aside one night a week where we can all have dinner together and then play bridge. All right, we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, if any time you need a cup of sugar, why, uh, remember, we're right here. All right. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you later. He's back. Wouldn't give me a chance to explain. <laughs> Did you hear that? She wouldn't give him a chance to explain. Well, don't take it so to heart. You'd make a lovely executioner. Now, what's the matter? Well, I opened my mouth to say something, and I got the newspaper right in it. Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. I'm sorry that things didn't turn out all right for Well, me. she'll get over it after a while. Here, let me sure. <laughs> Give it about three months. Well, nevertheless, I think it's darn sweet, in spite of all the trouble, that, that you're still going to go through with this. After all, you're not getting anything out of it. It doesn't seem quite fair. Well, gentleman's word is a gentleman's word. I... You just show me to my room, I'll... Oh, now, don't you worry, Doctor. We'll make you quite comfortable. I'll take that. We'll take your things and put them right in here. Uh, Johnny, the Doctor can have the two top drawers in the dresser. Afraid I'll need three. Uh, make it three. Oh, well, I'd better put all these things of yours in the bottom drawer. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, where will I put these? Oh, well, I'll show you, old man. Come this way. We'll put them in the closet over here. How's this? Is it crowded? Oh, we'll soon fix that. June, dear. Yes, Johnny. 
Uh, you don't need all this space, dear. Take these things out and put them somewhere else. Oh, there's always the ice box. Besides, it, uh, it'll be good for the furs. Oh, do you think this is a good location for a branch library? Well, if you've no objection, I'd rather continue with my profession. I'm preparing my fall course of study. Oh, I see, yes. Now, is this my bed? Well, you should... Uh, uh, well, no, not exactly. No. But we have something wonderful for you in the other room. You'd really be surprised how comfortable these things are. Oh, they certainly are. <laughs> See? Better than any bed they make. Why, I slept there all last night and didn't even know I was sleeping. Well, that's fine. Then you sleep there. Uh, I was wrong. Chivalry is dead. Yes. Can we get an apartment with two bedrooms? Yes, yes, certainly. We could take the penthouse and have butlers and footmen and everything. I think it's very generous. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that. You see, with my salary, I can't afford to. There you are, Doctor. It's all yours. We've settled everything. Wait a minute. Where are you going with that? Well, I thought you could work up on the balcony. But I can't work up there, Johnny. When I work, I've got to pace, and there's no room up there. Well, you can pace like this. Give me that. Oh, June, don't take this attitude. This is very trying for all it of us. It most certainly is. You take my dresser, my closets, my bed, and oh, so you Oh, by the way, to... I forgot something. Give me your left hand. Why? I'm pronouncing you man and wife. I am going to write this book in one week. Man you love. Uh, relative? Hey, Pasteur. What? Is, um, is that thing your idea of decoration? No, it has to be there. I keep referring to it. Oh. Please take that thing down. I, get, I can't look, look at it. Look, this is important work. I'm doing you a favor by just I know, being here. I know, I know, and I appreciate it very much. I'm sorry. I've just got that kind of a stomach. I can't take it. All right. You're an escapist. That's your trouble. Yes? My dear. I'm so happy. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Hello, Dad. Oh, Hello. she's wonderful, my boy. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad we came early. <laughs> oh. I forgot to tell you, dear, that some of the faculty wanted to drop in and meet you tonight. Oh, well, that's charming. Congratulations, so my dear. <laughs> I've known Tim ever since he was a little boy. Well, how sweet. Dr. and Mrs. Nielsen. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice of you to drop in like this. Oh, yes, indeed, it certainly it's is. It's not much. Oh, Doctor, you oh. shouldn't have done it. Oh, no, you shouldn't have, Doctor. I just love surprises. <laughs> uh, why, it's just what we needed. I was telling Tim only Dear, this morning that I... don't you that think I... you'd better pick some sandwiches before the others come? Uh, others? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? With all she's had to do, making fancy sandwiches. <laughs> yes, well, Tim, will you take care yes. of this for me, please? May please? I help? Oh, I no, no, certainly not. It only takes one to call the delicatessen. Pimento. <laughs> Had a recurrent bradycardia combined with epileptoid attacks. And there we found a small fibrocartilaginous nodule. Half the size of a pea. Wonderful <laughs> specimen in flame and sanus. Sanus? I mean sandwich. Oh, thank, you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you 
you've only just been initiated, my dear. That kind of talk used to bother my wife, too. Dr. Look, do they always talk sharp like that? Oh, <laughs> I suppose they do take it pretty seriously. But if they didn't, there'd be a lot less people walking about enjoying this nice weather we're having. Yes, I suppose. Mm. Uh, there's some cookies in there. Will you put two to each cup for me, please? Two? Mm. I'll give three to the dean. Mm. He has a coconut fixation. Seems to me that's playing politics a little, isn't it? Well, Tim's professorship is worth an extra cookie. I suppose. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's pretty funny. For years, Tim worked 14 hours a day for that professorship. That's so? Finally, he gets it. But not from his research. No? Oh, dear me, no. No. The thing that finally decides it is a little custom called marriage. Wait a minute. You mean, you mean that the dean gave Tim the professorship because he was married to me? Mm. Yes, both Tim and a chap called Hampshire were up for the job. Tim was married, Hampshire wasn't. Another of the dean's fixations. <laughs> I think he deserves an extra couple of cookies for that. Don't you? By all means, <laughs> Doctor. Yeah. Yes, I'm right there with us. But where's the coffee? Everybody's having a wonderful time. Everyone but Hampshire. Oh, he's not here tonight. No, he's probably out committing suicide. Or, uh, getting married. Yeah. A little late, eh, son? Uh-huh. Tim, would you please give this to the Dean? Look, why so many cookies? Why, you ungrateful thing. That's a bonus for giving you the professorship. Doctor, would you carry that tray for me, please? Yes, my dear, yeah. You're not getting anything out of this. You're only going through with it because you're a gentleman and you don't want to ruin my career. Gentleman's words, gentleman's words. Dean Lord. <coughs> Thank you. To Timothy, who yesterday was only an instructor. And tomorrow, who knows? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. <coughs> <coughs> Good night. Good night, Dean Lott. It was nice having you. Good night. 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 Good Oh, no. Well, you listen to me. I don't care if you're nine foot six. You're going to sleep on that couch if you have to do it in sections. Chocolate malt, please. Chocolate malt with egg? Oh, no egg. Just a plain chocolate malt. But th th there's no charge for the egg. It's a special today. No, thanks. Just plain. Yeah, but it won't, won't cost you anything. Besides, it's good for you. No egg. Tim, you get out of here. Please, you've got to make up your mind to listen to me. I'm not married. I never have been married. But the paper said... I can explain the whole thing. This is the way it started. Skyler 7648234. Skyler 76843. They made me a professor because I was a married man. But now that you are a professor, you can deny it. Oh, but how can I explain to the reporters the fact that I passed out on her bed? Oh. I mean, that sort of publicity, and I'd be bounced from the university. But when she goes to Reno, you're going to get publicity. Oh, but that isn't scandal. Anybody has a right to a nice, quiet divorce. Why, even the dean himself has had three wives. Well, let's get out of here. We're getting a little conspicuous. Yeah. Uh, let's have a drink, Marilyn, uh, dear. Over there, over there. Marilyn, I promise you, the minute she leaves for Reno, we'll sneak off and get married. Yes, but Cookie, this Cameron woman, are, are you and she living in the same... Oh, but it isn't the same, dear. I mean, we, we seldom see each other. But you're not living with your father now. Have you an apartment of your own? An apartment? Uh, yes, yes, at the uh, Standish Arms. Uh, you know, in the Gramercy Place. Oh, fine, Cookie. I'll be over to dinner tonight. Hey, you put an egg in this. You will? Uh -huh. but, 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 the, but the kitchen is awfully small. It's big enough for cocktails. I'll be there at 6.30. You'll be there at 6.30. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll think of something. What? Oh, I mean something special. What do you mean? Well, I, I mean something to go with cocktails. You, you don't want to come up there and find just martinis. <laughs> just martinis. <laughs> <laughs> 
There are exactly seven million bars in this town, and she has to have her cocktails up she's here. She's coming because she's suspicious. And if you don't hurry and she finds you here, it'll be all up. Just tell her I'm a woman with good taste, and therefore I would have no designs on you. She happens to be the girl I love. Yes, you've told me that before. There must be any signs of femininity around here. Well, perhaps you'd better take the flowers out of the curtains then, huh? What's that? That's Himmelweiss. He's always in my bedroom. Instead of a mattress? Don't stand there. She'll be here any minute. Don't you yell at me, you microbe hunter. It's bad enough being thrown out of my own apartment. I'll never get that book finished. It'll only be for a couple of hours. Yeah. I'll have to try and put it in the closet, huh? Miss Marilyn, what are you going to do? Well, uh, I'll get into bed and you can tell her that I'm a patient. No, 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 don't do that. Oh. But that's your dream girl. She sounds more to me like the village blacksmith. Hey, anybody home? It's dead. Hello, Hello Sam. Well, it looks like a big night for Professor Sterling. Yeah. Oh, they're not here yet. Well, you see, Dad, we were just going out, and then... Who's not here yet? Burkhardt's in town. Very enthusiastic over your migraine work. Burkhardt? Mm. Stringer's bringing him out. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Here in a minute but you now. see, tonight we, we yeah. were planning on, on going down to... to uh, uh, the... Hello. Hello. Hello, Pop. What's this? Hmm? Have you two had a quarrel? Yes. Yes, he hit me. You didn't. Yes, he did. Well, I, I only pushed her. You only pushed her? Tim, I shouldn't have to remind you that this is not the Neolithic age. <laughs> well, how would you like it if someone said that your father was a, a pompous, opinionated old windbag? I didn't say that. I would be honest enough to admit that the person was absolutely right. Oh, Pop, he's lying. I never said that. I don't care who said it, my dear. It's true. I talk too much. Your mother always said that. Here, here, come on, come on, come on. We're going to patch this up. Oh, no, no, Pop, I'm sorry. I'm going home to Mother. And you better hurry. No, you don't. You're going to stay right here. No, I'm sorry. I can't, Pop. I've got to leave. I won't have it, I tell you. It's downright childish. Breaking up a wonderful union, quarreling over me. I won't have it, I tell you. Let me see your thumbs. What? Your thumbs, Pop. Let me see them. Oh, I thought so. No use in arguing with you. Tim, I see a slight improvement. She's your patient. Yeah. Go on, my boy, go on. What are you waiting for? Rigor mortis set in? Kiss her. Go ahead. I'll go, Dad. No, don't you go. No, 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 no. Don't be nervous, son. You know more about headaches than any of these fellows. Hello, sweetheart. Johnny! Oh. This is uh, Tim's father. This is oh. Johnny. How do you do? <laughs> a wedding anniversary, uh, marriage, you know, eight days today, and we oh, thought a little Johnny, celebration. How sweet. <laughs> oh. oh, Dr. Burkhardt, welcome. Sir. Come in, come in. My daughter in law, Mrs. Sterling, how Dr. Burkhardt, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Pierce, Pierce. Mr. Pierce, yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. You know you? Dr. Streeter? Yeah. Hello? Look, uh, I want to talk to Mr. Johnson next door in 14A. Yeah, right away. What? They're not in? Oh, that's fine. Uh, I mean, uh, thanks very much. Tim! <laughs> Tim! Where's Tim? Oh, I'll get him. Will you excuse me, please? Thank you, dear. Thank you. Hey! I don't want to seem like a nagging wife, but that's not the way to the living room, you know. Well, I'm going to sneak through the apartment next door, then out at home, then I can head Marilyn off at the elevator. That's Tim! Fine. Tim! Wait, you better go in there and see them for a first. Come on. All right. Here he is. <sighs> Dr. Burkhart, my son. Dr. Sterling. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? I've been looking forward very much to meeting you. I've been looking forward to meeting you ever since Streeter sent me your paper on migraine. Thank you very much. Now, you two had better sit down here. I know you have a lot to talk about. Oh, no, 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 not just yet, please. Um, let me fix your cocktail first. And, Tim, you go into the kitchen and fix some of those wonderful cheese things that you do so well. Oh, yes, those things. Yes. Yeah. No, don't bother, old man. You have your talk. I'll fix it. You certainly will. You see, I'm sorry, but this is one of those things Tim has to do all by himself. Hurry, darling. <laughs>
wrong apartment. Oh, but you said 14B. Oh, did I? <laughs> Whatever made me say that? <laughs> Lucky I caught you, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Well, how do you like it? This isn't your apartment. Huh? This is your mansion. Oh. Oh, Tim, it's exquisite. Nice for the time being. I never thought you'd have a place like this. <laughs> Neither did I. Oh, I'm sorry if it seems such a shock, but after all, in your last place, you only had one chair. Yes, I did, didn't I? How can you afford it? Well, you see, I'm a professor now, and uh, practically makes me head of a department. Yes, but even so. And, of course, I've been doing quite a bit of consultation work, too. Well, I need a drink now. Oh, yes, the martinis. I don't have much time to make them yet, but I'll soon fix that, don't you worry. I... Don't you know where you keep your liquor? Well, as a matter of fact, I never know where that butler's gonna put a thing. Butler? Yeah, it uh, wouldn't surprise me a bit if you had him out in the kitchen right now. Now, you just big yourself at home and have a cigarette and uh, I'll attend the drink situation, huh? <laughs> So this is the nation's number one Korea woman. Was. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, my dear. Uh, perhaps, but personally, Mr. Sterling, you look to <laughs> well, me. Well, won't be long. Ah, Monsieur the Doctor de Cuisine. <laughs> You're very quiet for an amateur chef. We hardly heard you in the kitchen at all. Uh, everything under control, dear. Well, so far, all on the fire, but it just needs watching. Yes, sir. Tim, come back here. Yes, Dad. What's the reason for this sudden affinity for the stove? You never knew your way around a kitchen before. Well, the, the marriage, the marriage has changed all that, hasn't it, darling? Yes. Oh, uh, Dr. Sterling, is this the anatomical head your father was speaking about? Yes. I understand it's a replica of a glandular case you had at the clinic. Yes, we covered it from uh, caliper measurements. It's, uh, 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 oh, something's burning. I, oh, Johnny, would you bring me a drink? Or oh, better still, bring the shaker. Right. Hey, take it easy, old man. I've got Marilyn next door. Oh, well, that's not Marilyn. Well, you can't bring her in here. I'm not going to. But you've got to get rid of her. I'm trying to get rid of her. Now, if they get suspicious, knock on the wall, will you? Okay. That's an under sentence, huh? And will my cookie forgive me? Well, what's there to forgive, darling? I never thought I'd be a suspicious woman. But for a teeny moment, I really was. But you had every right to be, darling, every right in the world. I see now. You had to go through with the marriage. Why, yes, to get the professorship and in order to make enough money to take care of a professor's wife. Mm -hmm. But the minute she goes to Reno, we go to Greenwich. To Reno? Uh, what were his findings on hyperesthesia of the scalp? Well, I'm not quite sure. He... Ask him to come here a moment, will you please? Surely. Thank you. <laughs> my hand, it uh, went to sleep. What's that? Oh, just mice. Where are you going, well, Cookie? I've I, I got a little surprise for you in the kitchen. Oh, you're sweet. Oh, uh, stay here for just one little minute and don't peek, because if you do, I'll never forgive you. Oh, now, Professor, you don't want to spoil everything, do you? That's a surprise recipe. Uh, but... Look, these are your cheese surprises. Oh. Hurry up. Oh, Tim, what were your findings on the oxygen treatment in regard to hyperesthesia of the scalp? Well, I, I can't say that I came to any definite conclusion, but I'll say this, that during July at the clinic, out of 15 cases to which we administered oxygen, we found that 13 of the patients had developed a... Rita! Oh, pardon me, gentlemen, the little woman. Here are yours, cheese surprises, but don't offer me any. Uh, here. Hey, wait a minute, where are you going? Look, I... call me on the telephone in ten seconds. But what about the... Dr. Sterling. A what? 
A severed pneumogastric? Well, I'll be right over. Oh, Cookie, must you? Yes, darling, I'm afraid I must. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put you in a cab, and then I'll pick you up later, huh? Oh, huh? hi. Uh, but your hat. My what? My hat? Yes. My hat. Hello, Doctor. Oh, hello. Been keeping you busy? They certainly have. That's our new neighbor. They want us to play bridge sometime. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, that train. It's so good to be back again. Well, it's good to have you back, Lydia. I missed you something awful this time. I didn't go anyplace. I didn't do anything. I just couldn't sleep. My... Now, with this thought in mind, let us return to our microscopes and examine the specimen again. Doc, there's something on our minds. You amaze me, Mr. Slavkovich. What is it? Well, the coach was just wondering if we're going to be eligible to play against Fordham on Saturday. Well, gentlemen, as you well know, 75 is the passing grade, and so far you've confined all your passing to the football field. Well, uh, couldn't you give us some kind of an examination right now? If we passed, we'd be eligible to play on Saturday. Well, all right. <clears throat> Here's your examination, question number one. How many bones are there in the human body, Mr. O'Brien? Uh, uh... Well, um, couldn't we kind of, uh, think this thing over and, uh, phone you? Oh, come, come, Mr. O'Brien. How many bones in the human body? Well, uh... Well, there must be dozens. Well, I can't exactly call that wrong. Good luck on Saturday. Oh, gee, Doc, you're regular. We could offer right arm for you. All right. Doc, we'll murder him with that old XYZ play. Yes, sir. Dr. Sterling, there's a Miss Thomas wants to see you in your office. Oh, thank you very much. June Cameron's new recipe, love. Hot milk and honey for hard-working hubby. Always look exciting, girls, says June. Hot milk and honey. So it's only a business arrangement. Oh, Tim, how can you do this to me? But I didn't pose for this thing. It's strict photography. I'm the laughing stock of all my friends. I can't put up with it any longer. Don't worry, darling. You won't have to. This time you've gone too far. Oh, Johnny. You promised well, me don't that blame you... me. Charlie must have done it. I'll give you exactly three weeks to finish your little masterpiece and get to Reno. Oh, uh, she can finish the book in a few days, but she can't go to Reno for a month. An immediate divorce would kill the sales. I'll give her three weeks. That's strange. That sounded to me like an order. That's just the way I meant it to sound. Is that so? Yes. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, my pathological playmate, we can put an end to this thing much sooner. I think I can arrange to have you in Marilyn's arms by supper time. How? Perfectly simple. I'll just call up the gentlemen in the press and tell them we were never married. No, no, you can't do that. The university. <laughs> a great kidder. <laughs> you don't think she'd do a thing like that and ruin her own book, do you? I might if I got mad enough. And I think I'm mad enough. Now, you listen to me, my microscopic friend. You might be able to give orders to that barnacle you're engaged to, but the last time a man tried it on me, I was six and he was seven. And for one solid hour, I beat him over the head with my old day sucker. Now, you're so brittle that one of these cold days, you're going to break up into a million pieces. And when that happens, I want a seat right in the grandstand. That's very funny. Very you're like all the rest of these career women, just an inferiority complex turned inside out. Don't bother. I'll go. Oh, Pa! Oh, what a pleasant surprise from Dr. Streeter. Come in. What Thank you. Dr. Dear. Would you mind? Well, son. <laughs> you both look very happy. <laughs> the, the three of you. Uh, oh. uh, may I have your hat? No, no, no. But we only dropped in for a little just to give Tim a little advice. Oh. Tim, Streeter feels that when you talk to Burkhardt, you ought to make it quite clear that you don't want him to use any of your research in his new book. Junior, you'll be along. See that he doesn't get too generous. I will. Oh, oh, I oh, don't uh, think that I'm... June, dear, I forgot to tell you, but the Burkharts invited us up for the weekend. So oh. I think you'd better start packing, because we'll be leaving in a few minutes. Oh, will we? Well, we won't hold you up. It's a good seven-hour drive. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> My best to Burkhart. Uh, yes. Oh, you're going to have a very interesting weekend. They've got a 15-year-old daughter. She's just written a novel, and she's dying to read it to you. <laughs> I'm dying, too. Uh, goodbye. It was very sweet. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Happy weekend. Thank you. 
Now, what is this all about? Well, I'm sorry, but I, I forgot to mention it. Oh, I see. Well, it really doesn't make any difference, because I'm not going anyway. Oh, but darling, you must. If you don't go, then his father will think you're staying behind on my account. Johnny, I'm going to finish the book over the weekend. But you can work up there. Oh, of course you can. can. It might turn Yes, up. but just to keep the record straight. Remember, I'm doing this for him and not for you. All right, honey, please hurry up. I certainly will. Goodbye, Johnny. And if the last chapter's as good as the other six, then my wife will be as rich as she's lovely. Johnny. Come on, will you? We'll never make it. Will you please relax, my muddling medico? This happens to be one of those tender moments that you wouldn't understand. Goodbye, darling. Oh, well, my sweet. Second cousins. Thank you. Oh, I see Chester's come between us again, huh? Yes, and don't call him Chester. Thank your pardon. Oh, there's Marilyn. Where? Right, right, right there. Get, get down, will you, please? Tim. Why, hello, Marilyn. How are you? Where are you going? Oh, we're. Uh, I, I, I am going up to Burkhardt's to do a little work. Uh, Burkhardt. Remember, I told you all about Burkhardt. Uh -huh. Did you tell her yet? Oh, sure, sure. I told her, and she's she's leaving for Reno as soon as she possibly can. Well, she'd better. Of all the disappointed old maids, she takes the cake. Always look exciting. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I saw in the paper? It was the funniest thing. It said she was 25 years old. She's 40 if she's a day. Oh. <laughs> Gee, I'm right while I'm talking. Well, I didn't mean it, Angel. Mm, well, all right. Cookie, you know what I've been thinking about? You know where we could go on our honeymoon? Where? Tim, that's very rude. Well, what slipped there, did? Well, it's not at all nice. I should think after knowing her, you'd appreciate your baby a teeny bit more. Oh, I do, I do, Angel. I, oh, I do, Angel. Honest, I do. Am I forgiven? Forgiven. Honest? Truly. Oh, well, I've got to be going. <laughs> well, well, I've got to be going. Uh, goodbye, Cookie. <laughs> goodbye. You call me the first teeny weeny moment you get back. I will. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. <laughs> oh, Cookie. Yes. <laughs> Sterling, I presume. You nearly ruined everything. Well, in case you don't know it, the bottom of your car is not the ideal place to spend a weekend. Well, I'm sorry, but I had to talk to her. Oh, careful, Cookie! Why, you just missed getting us killed by a teeny weeny little bit. You are about the most obnoxious female I think I've ever met. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgiven. Forgiven. Uh Honest and truly. <laughs> and I just from one cookie to another, you must admit that's pretty stale talk, that cookie business. You know, it strikes me you're laboring under the impression that you're superior to Madeline. Uh -huh, no. Well, maybe in sarcasm, yes. But when it comes to, why well, you couldn't lure me out of a burning building. You know, Johnny and I were discussing only yesterday how quietly repulsive you are. Johnny? Uh-huh. You know, his devotion to you is really touching. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Loves everything about you. Mm -hmm. Your books, your profits, your apartment, your liquor, your cigarettes. You know, your, you and that little your... bundle of boredom are going to make a charming couple. And when people don't ask you out, don't blame it all on her. Really, officer, I was just doing a bad... I spotted the MD license on the car. You a doctor? Yeah. Well, come on, there's an emergency case. Follow me. Well, Joe, your luck's finally changed. This is Dr. Sterling. I mapped him up on the pike. Mighty There's kind of you, Doc, to put yourself no. out. She's upstairs. She seems to be having a lot more trouble than usual. Well, most of the time it just seems that way. I gotta get back on the beat, Joe. Hope it's a boy. Just so it ain't quintuplets. <laughs> oh, shoot you, Dad! Next time, son. Give me a right arm handlebar. Some other time. Uh, officer, what's the matter inside? Is anything serious? Well, the baby seems like it just don't want to be born. The baby? Well, isn't there a doctor in the community? Yes, there is, but I couldn't find him. Out oh. on another case, I guess. Oh. Well, I gotta get back on the beat. A lot of speeders going up to the football game. <laughs> yeah. Wish I was one of them. I'll bet. How soon? Not for a little while yet. Getting hot water? Where are your foot? 
sort of twisted it. Sit down. Let's take a look at it. I think you sort of broke it. Oh, it's a damn blame chuck holder. I stepped in one while I was plowing. Well, you better keep off it. Where's your nearest neighbor? Uh, Mrs. Sawyer, about a, a mile down the road. Yes, yeah, I'm There's a Mrs. Sawyer down the next farm. Would you mind driving down to get her? I need some help. No, not at all. All right, honey, hop off the car. Mrs. Sawyer. What's the matter with me? How is she? Well, nothing much I can do for a while. Where's Mrs. Sawyer? Oh, she couldn't come. She, um, she scalded her to ham with some boiling water. Bad. Yeah, that's your new dress. Yes, it is. I was afraid it had too much lure for me. There you are, Miss Thank you. All right? Well, kids, how is it? It's okay. Coming from you, that's pretty good. Hey, I'll get you cold. Billy. It's another career woman. Never saw so much kicking and screaming in my life. <laughs> She'll get over it. Hey, Doc! It's an Indian! It's all red! Burkhart's now. Oh, that's too bad. You're gonna miss your talk with him, aren't you? Oh, it is worth missing. I mean, after all, an Indian isn't born every minute. No. Besides, there'll be other weekends, won't there? You know, a discussion on the myelin sheath of the cerebrospinal nerve fiber is good any time. Where did you pick that up? Oh, I've been looking through some of our wedding presents. Oh. <laughs> Would you like me to drive for a while? Oh, that must have been pretty exhausting. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. I was a little scared. It's the first baby I've delivered since I was an intern. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you looked awfully good from where I sat. Never could have done it without the help of Mrs. Sawyer. Come in. Oh, sorry, Tim. I, uh... I want to get a glass of milk. That's perfectly all right, June. Well, here, why didn't you ask me? I'd have done that for you. There. Thanks. I'll get your milk. <laughs> Never mind. I'll get it. Um, would you like some? Well, yes, thanks. <laughs> wonder who that can be. Don't bother. I'll go. Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Slatkovich, how nice. Come in. What happened to your 
ahead. Oh, oh, nothing. Just a slight concussion. Uh -huh. Hey, Doc, we won the game. Yeah, we scored all the points between us. Oh, would you two like to celebrate with a glass of milk? Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> hey, Doc, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have been able to play. Well, your victory makes me very happy. You know how we piled up those points, Doc? Uh, no. I... The old XYZ play. That's the one where I take out the two guards from the tackle. Pardon me, Doc. And then Louis starts around in, cuts right through center. Oh, boy, I wish you could have seen it. Worked like nobody's business. I'm sure it did. Well, thanks for telling me about it. <laughs> Tell you about it? Well, Doc, we'd cut off our right arm for you. Wouldn't we, Slap? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some other time, boys. Good night. Awfully nice of you to come in and tell me about your great victory. And, uh, so long, Doc. bust in on you like this, Quite all Doc. right. Night. Hey, what's the matter? Something eating you? Did you see those flowers? Yeah, pretty, weren't they? Yeah, but you didn't see the note that came with it. it. said something about love and was signed John. And the doc's name ain't John. You mean some guy's trying to get away with the doc's little woman? And he's doing it, too. Else, why would the doc be sleeping on the couch? Oh, and the doc's such a swell guy. And they were so happy together. Hey, who is this skunk with the love and the flowers? I don't know, but the name on the card was John. And if I ever catch him, I'll tear him to small pieces. You mean we'll tear him to small pieces? You know, I think those two have a schoolboy crush on you. Yes, and I'm afraid their devotion will end with the football season. <laughs> Cookie? What? Oh, no, no, I meant this kind. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Yes? I think you must be pretty tired, and so I'll go on. Oh, no, don't go to bed, please. I'm on a bit tired. Why, well, I once sat up 72 hours in the straight jacket case. You did? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid I'd be pretty tame after that. Besides, my schedule calls for work tonight. Oh, but you can do it tomorrow. No. I'm sorry, I don't think I can. You see, I promised Johnny I'd have the whole book for him in the morning. Oh. Are you finished? Mm -hmm. All but four pages. I'd better run along and grind those out, don't you? Oh, think? but you shouldn't work tonight, really. You you must be tired. Uh, yes, I am pretty tired. However, the book's still got to be finished. And then I then I can go to Reno tomorrow night. Oh, I don't want you to feel you have to rush on my account. Oh, no, no. I mean, after all, I can always. No, I know. But I well, I'd like to get this thing over with as quickly as possible. But a couple of days one way or the other wouldn't make much difference. No, of course it wouldn't, but well, we promised Marilyn, you you remember? Yes. Yes, it seems we both made a lot of promises. Yes. Well, uh, good night, Tim. Good night. Good night, Chester. Good night, Chester. Did your shirts come back from the laundry? Yes, June. Well, I guess that's everything. Oh, wait a minute. You're forgetting your friend. Oh, yes. Him will advise that. <laughs> I hate to see him go. I'm gonna miss that radiant smile. <laughs> I'll send somebody around to pick these things up. I take them myself, and I'm driving up to Maryland's place in New London. She's giving some sort of party tonight. Well, that's all right. You, you can have them picked up any time. It, it doesn't matter. I wish you didn't feel you had to rush off to Reno like this. Well, she wants it this way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sometimes Marilyn's a little, uh... Well, I don't blame her. I'd have done the same thing. You know, in spite of the camera and wisecracks, I do think she's been pretty decent about this. It goes for you too, Tim. You know, without a husband, this book never would have been written. Yes, without a wife, I never would have been a professor. We've made our little speeches, haven't we? Bye, Tim. Take good care of Chester, won't you? Yep. <laughs> uh, goodbye. I hope you and John will be very happy. Thank you, and I know you and Marilyn will be. Oh, uh, I forgot. You know, when we first got married, I asked you to take all the blame for the divorce. Yes. Well, I'd rather you blame it on me. I'm not 
Tim, I'm sorry. A bargain's a bargain. But it wouldn't look good for you. And besides, the other way's much simpler. Now look, I'm not going to do it because it's. Oh, isn't you fair. are going I'm to do it. I'm not going to do it. That's look. all there is to. You win. Just tell him it was cruelty or something. Say I, uh, say I corrected papers in bed. Microscope's all packed? Yes. Well, our little managed conspiracy worked out very well, didn't it? With nobody the wiser. You know, Pierce, you're a pretty lucky guy. Oh, I know. The book will be selling like the proverbial hot cake. I wasn't talking about the book. Oh, June. Oh, sure. She's a great girl. And you've been pretty swell yourself through all this. Thanks a lot. Goodbye, old man. Goodbye. Oh, and by the way, you don't know what a comfort it was to know that she was perfectly safe with you. Well, goodbye once again, Professor. Frieda Schultz live here? Oh, Johnny, you and your gags. Well, we, I thought we'd better use another name. After all, you've got to be in Reno six weeks, you know. Mm -hmm. Do I look like Frieda Schultz to you? But, darling, if they discover the June Cameron's in Reno, then it'll kill the book. This way, we can go on selling copies right up to the very day you announce the divorce. Mm -hmm. You know, darling, I'm a pretty happy man. Charlie and I figured the whole thing out. In six weeks, we can sell 80,000 copies. Well, I think that's wonderful, Johnny. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, well, there is something. I said nothing's the matter. I'm from the Morning Express. I'd like to see Miss Cameron. Uh, no, no, man. No interviews today. Now, if you'll phone... I think she'll I... see me. Yes? Oh, Miss Cameron. Were you married at Greenwich? Why, uh, yes. Yes, I was. Strange. I've just been talking to the license bureau up there, and there's no record of it. There isn't? Well, uh... Uh, as a matter of fact, it uh, wasn't actually in Greenwich proper. You see, it was uh, outside. Uh, yes, yeah, it was at uh, that little place uh, by the fork in the road, that's you it, know. That's Look, it. let's stop kidding around. I happen to know you were never married. How dare you say such a thing? If I'm wrong, show me the certificate. Well, you see, I, I, I left it in my safe deposit box. Oh, so you did. <laughs> Look, I don't blame you for faking the marriage. You needed that kind of publicity for your book. And I hate to be the guy that kills a golden goose, but my job is to get news. <laughs> this is a swell story. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mustn't print that story. You, you, you really mustn't. All right. I'll give you a break. We go to press at 12 midnight. If you can show me before then that you're married, I'll kill the story. But he can't print that. Think of what it'll do to the book. Think what it'll do to Tim. They'll throw him out. Well, who cares? I care. Why, if this thing came out, he wouldn't be able to get a job as a horse doctor. Well, I don't think that's important. You don't think that's important? After he's been so decent with us, you... Oh, of all the selfish My individuals dear I've Jim, ever... dear, I didn't mean it like well, just that. Just what did you mean, then? Yes? We was just wondering if we couldn't see the doc for about he's a minute. He's not here. Now, darling, all I meant was... Oh, Johnny, what a prize package you turned out to be. Did you hear that? He called her darling. And she called him John. He must be the guy that sent the duck's wife them flowers. Let's give him the X, Y, Z. Certainly, that's it. Profits are important, not people. Why, Johnny, you've got a cash register instead of a heart. Why, here's the future of a really great man at stake, and you're worrying about the carnations in your buttonhole. Why, you're in love with this bumpkin. Yes. Yes, I am in love with him. Now, what do you think of that? Well, I might have known it, living in the same apartment. Why, you... Uh, will you get a hold of Miss Marilyn Thomas for me in, 
Uh, New London, Connecticut. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and hurry it up, will you please? Hello? Hello, this is Miss Cameron speaking. As soon as Tim, I mean, uh, Dr. Sterling arrives, will you have him call me right away? It's awfully important. Uh, no, no, I, I'd rather discuss it with the doctor, if you don't mind, and... But it's very important to his career. I, I am equally important to his career. No, I won't have him call you. I'm announcing our engagement tonight. Engagement? But you promised you'd wait. Why, if you announce it now, it'll spoil everything, don't you? I feel we've done more than enough for you. Engagement. Of all the double-crossing females I've ever heard of, my... How do you like that, Chester? Look, you wouldn't want her for your mother, would you? No, oh, certainly not. No one in his right mind would. Men certainly are blind, is all I have to say about the whole... Chester, if the telephone rings, you answer it, won't you? And don't you worry. We'll be right back. <laughs> now, Bella, look what's not the big surprise. Now, come on, everybody. Come on. Everybody, gather around. Gather right around here. You sit right down there. Hurry up. Hurry up, everybody. Come on. Are you ready, Cookie? Quiet, everybody. Quiet. Now... Marilyn, my sweet. Oh, forgive me for being so late. I hurried as, mm, just as quickly as I could. And I'm not dressed, but then you don't mind. You're so understanding. Hello, darling. I don't know what you're up to, but I'm going through with it. And I warn you, it's going to be terribly embarrassing. Why, Marilyn, how sweet you look tonight. Oh, goodness, I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I certainly uh, darling, didn't mean to. I, 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 what? I want you to meet some of the folks. Oh, oh, Tim, don't bother now. I'll get to know them all later. Marilyn, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over and sit in that corner in that chair, and I'm going to be just as quiet as a teeny-weeny little mouse, and you go right ahead with what you were doing, won't you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. I have an announcement to make. Oh, please, Marilyn, not now. Well, all I want to say is... Oh, Mrs. Sterling, is that for you? <laughs> oh, isn't it lovely? Ruth, Francis, Violet, Tim and Mr. Stanley. Oh, sure. Of course you want a boy. I never have. Well, Tim and I are... Congratulations, Tim. Why did you keep it a secret? I will get that boy. You can't get away with this. I know you're not married. You mean that... Well, you know, one thing leads to another. Oh, Tim. Is this true? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. And then the reporter said that he was going to print the whole thing. Well, can't you just see those headlines? Doctor promises to marry a society girl, deserts wife he was never even married to. Why, it's awful. Yeah, and becomes father of a child he never even heard about. Kind of a mess, isn't it? It's putting it mildly. <laughs> Well, I give up. There's only one thing left to do. Yes, what is it? Well, I've got to marry you. You've got to marry me? Well, sure. Then when you go to Reno, you can get a real divorce. You, you, you can drop me at the nearest hotel. Well, what's the matter? Never mind, never mind. J just pull in right over there. Nice night. Fill her up, regular Ethel. No, nothing. Uh, where's the nearest hotel? Well, you're looking right at it. Nice, clean bungalow, soft beds, $1.50 out. All right, I'll take one.
you like to play Chinese checkers with me? No, no, not right now, please. Hello? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, you haven't had a license yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I can fix that too. Yeah, yeah. I I'll be right over. Henry, has anything happened? Not yet. Who is it? Master, open the door. Go away. I don't want to see you. Oh, June, I want to talk to you. No, I don't want to see you. Go away. June, please, will you open the door and let me in? Please, Sam, go away. We play bridge next Thursday with with Johnson and his wife. Do you do you think you could make it? Oh yes, dear. I think I could make it.